Hi, I'm going to show you uh, a tutorial in Lightroom today. Um, this is Lightroom 4, but most of the things I'm going to be showing you are available in Lightroom 3 uh, as well. I'm going to be doing a black and white conversion primarily, that's that's really what I'm here to, to talk you through. Uh, but some of the things I'm going to be changing are going to be relevant to processing in general. Um, so let's go through it. Let's have a look at this picture. First of all, you can see that the light is fairly flat. Um, it's reasonably overcast for quite a stormy day. You can see it's stormy. We've got the uh, wave hitting the sea wall, and I noticed these these kids having fun uh, running backwards and forwards away from the wave. Um, so I just got in and quickly got a shot. Some of the things that we need to change is I mentioned that the light's quite flat, so we do need to give the image a bit of punch. Um, so we'll be doing that uh, as part of the black and white conversion. Also, because it was shot quite wide angle with a 15 to 30 millimeter Sigma lens on a Nikon full frame camera, we need to have a look at correcting some of that distortion as well. And we've got a couple of things here. We have the barrel distortion, which gives you that sort of pincushion effect. Um, and also we've got converging lines a little bit because we're on the lower level. And if you look at the pier, the kind of sort of, I'm going to call them turrets, but <laughs> um, those parts of the pier seem to sort of lean out a bit. So we need to have a look at that as well. Um, we'll be using uh, the convert to black and white feature and we'll be using uh, adjusting contrast in perhaps two or three different ways. Um, we'll look at using the uh, hue, saturation and luminance in the luminance sliders to adjust the tonality of each individual colour channel or what would have been colour uh, before we converted it to black and white. Using those sliders will enable us to control uh, the tone in things like the sky um, quite quite well. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to see if I can correct some of this uh, distortion. So I'm going to go into um, lens corrections and I'm going to click uh, enable profile correction. Now I've actually chosen the Sigma 10 to 20 mil, which isn't the same lens, but I think does a reasonably good job in kind of dis adjusting the distortion that we had and also removing a few things like uh, the natural vignetting that the lens has given me. Uh, that's quite a sort of uh, uh, sort of a part of using a, a wide angle lens. Sometimes you get a bit of vignetting uh, where the corners go a bit darker. Okay, um, I'm actually going to go into the manual settings in lens corrections as well. Importantly, I'm going to click this little checkbox that says constrain crop. Because when I use these, essentially I'm distorting the image and it's going to create an area of blank canvas around the image. Well, clicking Constrain Crop crops out that area of black, uh, blank canvas, uh, which is obviously what we want to do in this situation. It's the verticals that I'm more interested in. So it's the vertical slider that I'm going to be moving here and I'm just going to move it until I get it to a place where I think it looks about right. Um, so let's try that about plus nine. Um, I reckon that is nearly it. Let's just try uh, maybe a bit less. Let's try five. Yeah, five looks pretty good. Quite often you can't completely correct it, but um, uh, you can you can get somewhere that looks a bit more natural. Uh, and I think maybe we could go a little bit more. Let's just try seven. I'm looking at both these verticals here, especially these flagpoles. Um, and I think maybe six is going to be our happy medium here. Not going to be perfect, but I think it looks more natural than it did before. Okay, that's that part. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make some crops. Uh, I think I actually I, sh I shot this picture very, very quickly. Uh, and actually, I think I've got a bit too much uh, horrible expression, negative space. Because um, there is a bit of extra space around here. And I think we could probably crop some of that away. I think also we're going to crop this part of the pier up here that says GIFs as well because it's kind of slightly distracting. So I want to bring it into about here. So let's do that now. Use the crop tool up here. And you can see now when I use the crop tool that the, the where we've uh, got the blank area of canvas around that uh, when we use the lens corrections we click constrain crop and it crop those out. Under the crop tool I have this little padlock clicked, uh, locked so that it constrains the proportion so when I drag around the crop um, it's not going to give me a different image ratio. I want to keep that same image ratio. We've got a seagull up there that we want to completely remove. And I'm going to bring this in quite... Or I'll perhaps keep a little bit of that wave on the right-hand side here as well. And then I'm going to come in 
and get rid of that bit of the pier here and just keep these people up here looking out over and that keeps the pier as well. Now do I need to rotate? Well I could do, I can use this straighten tool here, I can see the horizon here if I click across here to this part of the horizon very slightly needs to rotate it. So there we are, that's the, that's the crop, I just hit return or click done that's the image that we're going to work with. Overall the image is pretty well exposed, if I look at the histogram up here I can see that the, the blacks start down here at zero, go up and down through the scale, they go quite high here because there's a lot of uh, highlight uh, lighter areas of the image in the sky and in the pier itself and the wave, but overall we haven't lost any highlight detail and we haven't lost any shadow detail so it's a pretty good exposure to work with. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is click on black and white in the treatment. At the moment you can see it's on colour, and I'm going to click on black and white. So that takes the colour out of the image, but overall it looks, looks quite flat. Um, so we definitely want to work with that. First thing I'm going to do is have a quick play around with the contrast. I think we'll boost the contrast. I'm going to go up to about plus 40 here, I think. Uh, I'm just going to overtype that, 40. Um, so far so good. Now with a black and white image I like to add a bit of clarity especially when it's um, an image like this. If it's landscapey, got a lot of detail in it you can you can get away with using a bit of clarity and it kind of adds a bit of sort of sharpness to the image. Uh, actually it's increasing mid-tone contrast uh, and that I think will work well for this image. I think I'm going to go plus 40 on this one. Be careful with clarity, you generally don't want to use it too much on a portrait for example because you'll over sharpen skin tones and that won't look particularly nice um, unless of course that's that's what you're going with um, works particularly well with kind of sort of older faces where you want to emphasize those sort of um, features of the face okay um, I've also you've noticed here in the basic tab I've got the highlight slider which I can play around with so I could just have a play with that and just bring down the highlights to bring a bit more detail back in the sky uh, I could play around with the blacks, but I think I probably selectively want to do that a bit more now. I'm just going to bring that up a touch now, actually, just to bring a bit more detail back. That's about it for the basic tab. I'm going to go in now into the tone curve. With the tone curve, you can use it the same as you can in Photoshop by literally clicking on it and moving parts of it around, uh, or you can actually use the, the sliders themselves. I prefer to use the sliders. I find actually clicking on it a bit too fiddly. Uh, I'm actually not going to do too much with that for the moment. I'm going, going to go into black and white, uh, which is normally hue, saturation, and luminance, but now um, this is about the black and white mix. Uh, and each color channel represents the colors that were in the image and no longer in the image. Um, so, for instance, the blue channel, uh, there's going to be some blue to the sky. So, look what happens if I move this around, go up, goes brighter, go down, goes darker. So, we can bring in more detail. Um, to the sky and I think we need to do that and I'll bring that right down like that and it's good just to have a play around really this is what I do with these sliders I move them around and see actually what parts of the image are going to be adjusted uh, and whether they need to be adjusted so I'm going to move orange so okay so we've got some kind of warmer orange uh, to the to the ground and to the wall itself and some in the pier as well Okay, you can see the letter, the R on Brighton Pier changing as well. Okay, I think I'm going to move this up a bit. You have to be a little bit careful to not go too extreme with these because it can have adverse effects on the quality. Let's try moving the yellow around as well. There's going to be again some yellow in the ground and in the wall. Let's bring that up a bit here. That's good. Uh, let's have a look to see if there's any aqua in this. Yeah, a little bit in the sky, not too much. Bring it down a bit actually. And I wonder if there's any green in here. Oh, very little. Some in the water in the sea. Okay, that's about it really for the black and white mix. Uh, I think that's done a fairly good job. I'm not going to split tone this, I don't want to add any uh, highlight or shadow tone to this, I, I want a straight black and white, so I'm not going to touch that. I'm going to go down to detail. With a black and white image, um, it's fairly easy to, um, it's 
going to mouse over the image here and just see where the detail is. It's quite good. We can we can add a basically with a black and white. You can you can add quite a lot of sharpness uh, to it. And I'm just going to change this sharpening value here. I'm going to take it up to about 45, I think. So 45 um, amount radius one detail 25 masking zero, and I think that works quite well. Okay. I'm not going to use any noise reduction whatsoever. Turn that right down. Lens corrections, we've already done that. Effects, what I'm going to go into, I'm going to add a little bit of grain into this image because I always think with the black and white it's quite nice. Uh, I think actually the film grain replication in, um, in Lightroom is quite good. I'm just going to bring that down just a touch, about 15 I think. Okay, I'm starting to get somewhere now. To getting to a point where I'm getting happier with this image. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use do some selective adjustments and I'm going to use the brush tool, the adjustment brush. When you click on the adjustment brush or any of these tools up here actually the um, options for those tools appear underneath it. I can adjust the size of the brush uh, now I'm using a Mac and a, a mouse where I'm able to use the trackpad on the mouse to increase or decrease the size of the brush which is a really useful feature otherwise you just change it down here with the, the brush size I'm going to first of all look at making the sky a bit darker so I'm going to choose a brush size of about that then these are all the different things I can affect with this brush uh, I'm actually going to choose from the custom menu and choose burn which is darken it's a traditional darkroom technique of making parts of the image darker. We can do that in a digital darkroom as well. So that defaults the exposure to minus 0.32, so it's going to make it a bit darker. Now if I wanted to, I could bring down the highlights a bit as well, which would bring back a bit more detail in the highlights. I may even add a bit of clarity, mid-tone contrast, um, and I think that's probably about it. So now I'm literally you're going to click and hold down I'm holding down the mouse all the time while I'm doing this and I'm just going to, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to try and paint round the wave itself, I want the wave to stand out so I'm painting over the sky still holding the mouse down try and paint round the pier as best I can without affecting the pier too much I don't really want to make the pier darker I, can, I might go back and make the pier slightly brighter as well actually okay I think we're doing quite well here right okay now once that's done you can see it's that's the original point that I uh, clicked on and started painting if I just mouse over that for a second it will show me the areas in red where I've, I've painted and that's that's pretty much what I wanted really um, so that's quite good now I might want to do the same thing with the foreground actually um, just to help bring our eye into the picture and so I'm going to darken this foreground off a bit here to bring our eye through the picture and I think this will take quite a bit actually I can I'm going to paint here I'm actually going to make the adjustment afterwards as well I've used the same settings minus 0.32 on the exposure minus 11 on the highlights and a little bit of clarity as well with that one still selected, um, oh actually I'm using the same selection, so this is all part of the same selection. I'll mouse over that, you'll see where I've gone now. I'm actually going to uh, click off of this tool and click back on. And I'm going to do another session of painting over this foreground to make it even darker still. And now this is a, an adjustment all of its own, so if I wanted to, I could now adjust this bit afterwards as well by now moving this slider further. You can see the effect, obviously way too much, um, but you get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. And this really kind of will draw your eye into the picture, I think. Okay, yep, still not quite happy with it. Uh, and one thing I'm not happy with is the people are very, very dark in the image. I want them to be a bit brighter. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to zoom in quite close actually and see these kids here and I'm going to now use another adjustment brush this time I'm going to click lighten, dodge uh, choose the right brush size you can see that the default is gone to plus 0 0.23 and I think that might be just enough 
I'm just going to paint now over her face, over her coat and things. She's wearing black, so that's not. We don't really want to brighten it up too much. It's really faces and lighter colour clothing that we can we can bring out. And again, once I've done this, it's quite subtle at the moment, but I think actually I'll probably make it a bit less subtle in a minute by increasing it a bit more. Whilst in a tool in Lightroom, if you hold the space bar, you can get the hand tool up and, and move that around, move the image around to navigate the image. There we've got a, a mum here as well with the kids, um, having a bit of fun as well. Okay, so that's pretty much all of them in view there. Let's just see, obviously that's way too much, but I think probably a happy medium's about that. Plus 0.71, that's fine. I'm gonna come over this side of the image and to these people in the foreground here, and I'm just gonna brighten them up a little bit as well. This lady's hair here. Okay. If I wanted to, I could bring in a bit more detail in the coat and things as well. Maybe his jeans. Detail in the coat here. I think that's probably about it. Let's just zoom back out. I think that looks pretty good. Um, I could, if I want to, wanted to, select this one and now delete it, and you'll see the difference. Okay, and I'm going to undo that and go back to how we were. There we go, which is better. So hopefully that's not obvious to anyone who um, who doesn't know what we've just done. Um, but now I, I think that we're really starting to get somewhere. Uh, I'm going to bring out some more detail though. Um, so again with the adjustment brush, I'm going to lighten. I'm going to lighten this area here of the of the pier. I kind of like this sort of crisscross uh, effect underneath here. And I'm actually going to brighten up some more of the pier as well on the white parts, right down to the end, on the front of the pier here, and also these people here overlooking, which is quite nice. Just brighten those up just a touch. And I think that's about it for that one. I may just increase that a touch more. And it's always good just to move this slider around just to see how much effect that that's having on the image. And I think we want to go to about plus six, I reckon, like that. Okay. I still think that that wave needs to stand out just a touch more. And um, I'm tempted just to, again, adjustment brush and just perhaps go over that a little bit to, to make that just slightly brighter in some places. Coming over here as well. Okay, I think that's good. I think that's good. I'm still looking at the histogram up here. Uh, and if I mouse over the left hand side, it shows the shadow clipping very, very marginal. And if I mouse over the right hand one, that shows me the highlight clipping. In fact, it's it's clicked, so it's automatically going to show me it. But we don't have any, so it's not a problem. Um, just turn those off. Okay, uh, anything else I need to do on this? I'm still going to make more of this sky. I want it to be a bit more moody, a bit more dramatic. So I'm going to have another paint over that in a minute. Let's just click off of that tool, click back on, and go back down to darken. Again, choose the right brush size. Darken some more of this sky. So, remember I'm, I'm going to sort of go just outside of the wave itself and make the rest of the sky a bit darker. I'm going to have to be a bit careful around the pier itself because I don't want to sort of make parts of the pier darker and parts of it not. Um, so I may have to use a slightly smaller brush as I go in here. Around here. Okay. Okay, let's just have a look at that. So yeah, we've come quite a long way with that image. Um, I think that last adjustment does show a little bit of a highlight, a little halo around the around the pier. 
So unfortunate because I think I'm going to have to adjust that slightly. Go back into this brush. Which one was it? Let's find out. Was it this one? Uh, no, it wasn't that one. It must have been this one. It shows me the area I've gone over there. And I did minus 0 0.52. Let's just make that minus 0 0.3. Just to tone that off a little bit so it's not quite so obvious. Um, yeah, I think we're very, very nearly there. Um, may just add a little bit more. <coughs> use the lighten tool this time, pick the right brush size and just bring a little bit more detail perhaps into this wall along here. It's quite nice detail with this stonework um, so just bringing back a bit more of that would be quite nice. Kind of draws your eye through the image as well so it's a nice element of it. Over here and then around there a little bit as well. And I may just choose a larger brush size and just go over these guys a little bit more as well. I think that's good. And last thing I'm going to do <coughs> is I it's often overused vignetting, uh, in introducing some vignetting to the image to again really bring bring your eye into the center of the picture. And I'm going to do this under effects, post crop vignetting. I'm not going to go too mad. I bring it in first of all and then I'll soften it off. I'm going to give it the amount of, let's try about minus 20 first of all. And I'm going to adjust the feather as well to really make it nice and soft. Okay. For me, I think that's about right. It's ended up, it's got some nice tonality in the image. Um, I think the important parts of it are bright enough, which is the people. Um, we can clearly see the wave, the sky is nice and dramatic. Um, we've brought back some detail in the wall and in the pier itself and of course these, these onlookers over here as well looking at the, the kids running away from the wave um, so there's a lot of nice things happening in this image um, and I think it would be nice as a, as a fairly large print so that you can see that detail in it so there you go, how to do a black and white conversion in Lightroom um, using a lot of its features and trying to get the most out of the tonality I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye.